Hello and welcome to Pookie Ponders, the podcast where I explore big questions with brilliant people. Today's question is autism and ADHD. Should special interests be encouraged? And I'm in conversation with Richard Simmons. I'm Richard Simmons. I'm director of All the Board Club. Uh, this I set up three years ago following my own autism diagnosis and subsequently an ADHD uh, diagnosis as well. Uh, All the Board Club runs inclusive play sessions uh, for autistic ADHD children uh, based around their special interest in trains. And the question episode today is, uh, should special interests be encouraged? So do you want to say a little bit about that and then we'll see where the conversation takes us? It's quite common for autistic ADHD people to have a special interest, something uh, which they really want to learn about, uh, retain the information about and spend a lot of time doing. Uh, these special interests are often seen as a, a sort of a pastime, something to do in their spare time. But it's increasingly becoming obvious that they're actually really powerful in terms of helping them through education and also for employment opportunities as well. And they're not always necessarily painted in an entirely positive light, are they? I, I often hear people talking about special interests like obsessions and almost seeing that this is something we have to teach children not to spend too much time doing. What, what are your kind of thoughts on, on that? Yes, the, the, the obsession word, in fact, pops up on the National Autism Society website annoyingly, um, which inevitably puts a sort of negative spin on it, um, that they're spending too much time on it. Um, uh, in, a, in a sort of neutral way, they're, they're sometimes seen as something which is uh, a, a useful pastime for them to do by way of, um, you know, as a, you know, if you finish your homework, then you can go and do X or, um, you know, if you're not feeling very good today, then why don't you go and do something? Um, they are the, the obsession side of things. Yes, they are potentially using up more time than other people might, than neurotypical people might. Um, but it, it's it's actually a case of working out why it is that they're spending this amount of time they're so engrossed in it um it can be a sort of a form of relief uh, release even um just to be able to go back to something that is known that is that is sort of predictable but there's more to it than that um there is this sort of wanting to sort of acquire information about it be up to date with it broaden their ideas what they've got to become an expert in it um and, and then to, to then have opportunities to use that information uh, or, or to use that almost those research skills um, is it can be can be uh, astonishing. I've, I've, I've worked with a number of people, both um, school age children and and uh, university students and older who are now working in their ideal job, whether it's working with network rail planning timetables. I know of a guy who is a bus schedule for a bus company. He knows his company's bus schedule and the size of the buses and probably the inside leg measurement of most of their drivers. Um, and so, of course, when he schedules something, he knows it's going to work. He's doing it for the, you know, for the love of it, as well as for a, hopefully a half decent salary as well. So there's definitely some some positives there in terms of, of special interests. So you you set up um, the um, All Aboard Club to take uh, the idea of, of many children who might have a special interest in. Was it is it specifically around train? Tell us more about it. There you go. I'm putting words in your mouth without knowledge. Tell us about it. <laughs> um, it's 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 a strange concept to describe. We take over a large venue, whether it's a church hall, a museum building, wherever. And we initially fill the floor with Brio train tracks, Tomy train tracks, battery powered ones. Um, uh, but that's not there specifically for the children to play with. That's just giving them something you know, to start with. We then have 15, 20 children come in. Um, they exhibit every possible trait across the spectrum. Um, and it's always slightly astonishing to think there is this one word description that describes them all. Um, and it is basically their space. It is, it is pretty much unstructured. It's unsupervised in terms of we don't organize things for them. It is very much their space. They're working together. Um, yeah, we do have a few little problems, but then that's, you do in any group of children. Um, it's sort of designed so they, they, they need to interact with each other. Um, if only because they're having to share, you know, they, they, both of them, you know, two people want the same train out the box or they both got to go along the same piece of track. Um, and they're in a situation where many of them are perhaps not used to being in a, a big group situation. Um, but be again, because of the special interest, because of the fact of what they're doing, namely playing trains, that allows them to 
to sort of focus on the difficult bits that their that their social communication skills, um, the, their environment. It can get loud, it can get noisy, it can get busy. But again, even children that we know have sensory challenges, um, they manage to be able to um, sort of work with those in the environment when when other in a in a public situation or another venue might not be possible. Um, so yeah, we're open. We we run the sessions for two hours, and the kids are there absolutely. You know, from doors opening, and we they don't want to go home at the end. Uh, the parents love it. Um, they've they've been to many sort of public situations, public playgroups where, for whatever reason, uh, it's been very difficult for their children to 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 get in or to then sort of interact with the other children. Um, we are run by people who are autistic, have ADHD, or work in those areas, so we know what it's all about, um, and we are deliberately very hands off. Um, we do have little sort of issues every so often, um, and if somebody's being creative or trying to do something, you know, we'll try and spot it. And, and, and so by the end of the session, the train tracks are something can very, very different. Uh, there's always somebody trying to run the longest train possible, and it's always falling off. Um, mm. And there's little teams of guys meeting up. It's not the same children every week. Um, and you get there's been lovely instances where we've just watched these guys. Apparently, they're not supposed to be able to, you know, interact, work together, empathy, and all of that, all of that stuff. And they're these, you know, these children just working together, um, teaming up, sharing stuff. Um, it's it's lovely to watch. Why trains? Is this something you <laughs> always enjoyed? Um, I was brought up with them. Um, looking back on it, my dad was definitely down the Asperger side of things, um, and he ended up talking about special interests in employment he ended up a job at the national railway museum in york when it opened which from a subject point of view was ideal for him from a, a sort of working environment was very hard very sort of civil service driven um and i remember growing up and everywhere we went just happened to be and we ended up by the side of a railway line or something so we, we were just completely sort of um this is what we were used to. So I, I knew, I, as a result, I had quite a lot of, sort of contacts and, and knew how it sort of ticked. Um, and we've actually, it's been lovely. We've, we've been able to develop the play sessions in, in various venues to then broaden them out. So we've been to the, the Science Museum special, uh, special educational needs events. We've run autism weekends at the Bluebell Railway in Sussex, um, uh, which is was the older ones. Um, older children came along to that as well, rather than mainly our sessions are sort of primary age children. Um, so we're always looking for sort of opportunities to to sort of broaden it out, um, and we're getting some lovely comment, lovely reactions from you know, actual operators as well. Uh, we 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 did we we took a group of uh, twenty um, kids and their families on the Docklands Light Railway. We, they wanted to do all of it from end to end, and all this you know, and continuously. You know, not the sort of typical request, but there you go. Um, <laughs> and the guys running Docklands Light Railway were absolutely brilliant. Um, and accommodated us beautifully and we've got other other irons in the fire and the similar places to go to as well um, and it gives us a, a chance I suppose also to with these various venues these various operators just to sort of flag up to staff and the, the, you know what relatively little it needs to make things autism friendly um, and and to sort of get their get their sort of staff up to speed um, so they can just experience it and go oh oh okay so that's you know but that's that's a good approach that's a good strategy and what sort of things do you tell them teach them in order to make things more autism friendly you said you, it doesn't take very much to to make that difference what makes the difference um often a um a sort of filling in filling in the gaps there is that assumption that if you're bringing autistic children to something that they're going to have special needs they're going to have a learning difficulty they're going to have they're not going to be able to do that and you don't no no actually hang on that you, you, that's a very that's a small subset of them, um, and then you get the sort of over helpful. They want to do everything. They want to have, put somebody on on the uh, the entrance to greet everybody, and we're going no no no. Actually, they just want to they just want to sneak in and go and do what they know they that we've told them is happening. So don't expect them to you know launch into a conversation um, with you or get excited or want to take something from you or whatever. Um, it, it, it's always it's always funny whenever we. Um, Whenever we open the doors for one of our play sessions and, and the families are coming in, um, whether their families have been before or new families, quite a few parents sort of expect their child to say hello to me. 
um, and the fact that they've had flicked eye contact with me and I've seen them and gone, all right, so and, so, and they've, they've gone and they're piling in playing with the trains. I'll have a conversation with the parents and they'll, they'll be sitting there go, well, you know, I, I'm so sorry, you know, you should have said hello. And I'm going, no, no, no. <laughs> um, it's, it's, that, it's those sort of social niceties which you can, you, which become a sort of uh, optional um, and just sort of allow things to run as smoothly as possible. Um, try and sort of uh, anticipate things that might happen uh, and have a few people around in, in the right places who can, if need be, um, you know, sort out uh, situations if for whatever reason it becomes, you know, uh, it, it becomes difficult. Um, and also if somebody needs to leave early or whatever, or it's just because it's just becoming too, too much for them. Uh, it's knowing not to sort of just let that happen. And if they need to go, they need to go. Um, so it, it, yes, it's, 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 it's very easy for us. We run all the board club because we sort of have obviously personal or professional experience ourselves um but it's nice just sort of fill in the gaps um and you and you see that that's you see their their the the, the awareness and the understanding getting there and they go oh okay now now they've got a better idea because day to day they'll be dealing with more people as well and you said that you set up all aboard club following your own uh diagnosis so what's the story there is that happy something you're happy to talk about <laughs> yeah it was um it was a suggestion from one of my sisters who uh, who's a teacher I, i'd been in teaching myself briefly um i'd had a sort of career of lots of short-term jobs got frustrated got depressed with them hopped around tried different things including teaching um and and she said oh you know have you ever thought that you might be autistic and it one of my uh teaching placements when i was training to be a teacher was actually in a, uh, a secondary uh, school in london with an autism unit and looking back on it, I, I was I was just intrigued and working with all the autistic kids through in, in, in the classrooms and finding that really easy. Um, it was one of those sort of looking back on quite a few moments like that, uh, going, OK, yeah, maybe I, maybe I might have spotted this earlier. Um, uh, and then it was the that was the sort of a realization of how difficult I why I found sort of corporate jobs difficult. Um, uh, and it sort of came through getting used, getting to know um, what was going on in the whole sort of autism community, uh, what sort of facilities were being run by, um, largely by parents, um, for, for other parents. Um, and went out to see um, a little local support group in Reading called Engine Shed, which ran essentially what we do now. We, we were, they allowed us to borrow their idea and make it bigger and take it on the road. Um, uh so yes it, it, it was one of those things you walked into a room and go oh yeah i can see why this works um and then the sort of my 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 brain then went just sort of scaled it up and going yeah this there's a lot more people out there that would like it um so it, it's become my my business my job uh with a brilliant team of volunteers to uh, help things to keep things ticking over and running the events and do you think that your like is it is it one of those things that you wish would have been there for you when you were younger or are you just taking joy in the doing it now or um i i was i i sort of sailed through school pretty bright did did well you know got good grades so it was that thing of you know uh, you, nobody even suggested it mm. um and i suppose there were there were things that we could have done we were coming from a family with yeah, neurodiverse parents, albeit undiagnosed. Um, we we sort of did our own little thing, our own little, you know, slightly insular family. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really sort of notice what what wasn't um, what we were not not doing the same as other people, I suppose. Um, it became more obvious going to sort of universities and jobs and things afterwards, where I just didn't quite sort of fit in, or, or um, I tend to do things based around the activities that I was doing. Um, so yeah, it was. I think if I would known I was autistic earlier, I would have I would have set up something like this earlier. Um, it's it's just that there is a we're a little bit sort of specialist among specialists in terms of what we do, but it's uh, and we're hoping that it'll it'll it might inspire people to sort of look at other areas as well um, and and develop. It's it's an obvious special interest that is a, a is a group activity it is sort of easy to to run some public events with. Um, we're always looking at other ways to to help other bits of the um, other bits of the autism community in the same way. I, I th I'm interested particularly about the, the trains and vehicles kind of thing, because um, yeah. this is one of the things I do a lot of work about autism in 
girls and uh, one of the things we often talk about is how when girls have special interests they often tend to be a bit more sort of socially acceptable or we don't pick up on them always um, as much um, whereas if we see yeah. a boy who's taken a big interest in trains or buses or planes then we will often go hmm I wonder um, yeah. and I just I wonder what what is it about um, about trains and things that that yeah really seems to engage the autistic brain <laughs> yeah I, I, I've I've, I've seen as many suggestions as to why particular special interests are special interests as I've read articles about them. Um, there's that a sort of predictability. There is the sort of the, the, the fact you can learn a lot of information about them, um, I, which I suppose also would apply to where people have an interest in, in, in particular science fiction characters or Doctor Who, whatever. There, there's a big backstory to pick up um, and a whole sort of back. Um, that catalog of information to to learn and find all the interrelations between them um but then there are others that are just very sort of very esoteric and just sitting there and it's just something that somebody likes doing yeah. um it, it's I, th I think it's very much based on on it, it'll be driven by whatever the, the the child's sort of interests are their particular character whatever they're used to doing what you know however whatever their family situation is um uh i I think it's it's more obvious as well in that it is very much an external thing. If you see somebody playing with a dinosaur or a train or being a Doctor Who fan, it's going, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but when it when it's something more subtle um, or internal or design driven or whatever it might be, um, it 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 isn't it isn't as easy. Um, it's yes, it's 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 an intriguing one. Um, I was uh, the the whole the all aboard club idea and me finding out about it and and, and the engine shed group in Reading came out from a um, I happened to see a tweet um, about a, a a mum wanted to set up a group for broader sort of transport interests uh, or families just to sort of share ideas and uh, I said yeah I've run Facebook groups before and uh, but very quickly Transport Sparks was born and it's run for um, it's run for about four four or three four years now. Um, nominally London-based, an interest in anything sort of with wheels on in London. Uh, there are now, I think, 900 families in, in the group, just wow. sharing just sharing information about what's going on, something unusual. Um, obviously, once lockdown finishes, um, they'll be back out there doing their things. I mean, that's where the, the, the trip on the Docklands Light Railway, um, you know, from, from end to end sort of came from that group as well. Um, so that, that covers, you know, buses, planes, you name it, a bit of everything. But then you get some really, you get some beautifully specialist ones in there. Um, I remember one of the very early members had a particular interest of videoing level crossings working. He wasn't actually that bothered about the trains and he, he liked to see the, the level crossing barriers going up and down, the lights flashing, and he liked to video it. And that was his thing. Wow. And you go, fine. And what was lovely about the group was that as soon as they rather apologetically said, you know, this is what their son did, you then got the others in the group who said, oh, my son does that as well, you know, and so instantly you got a little, a little specialist, a specialist group within a specialist group. Um, and then you get that sort of realization that this is, this is not that unusual. Um, uh, so yes, it's, it's, it's an odd one. I've never quite got to the bottom of it. And I think also we find in, you know, within our play sessions, they are how the children interact with the trains is very different. There are the sort of operating types who want to run the trains there are, i get little sort of young engineers who want to build complicated things and work out how they all connect together i've got guys coming along with with cameras setting up little scenarios little pictures uh, and taking pictures of them um i've got the collectors who will go through and will sort the boxes out or or set up a particular train of particular things um and then well there'll be always somebody making the biggest train by the end of it um and it's just intriguing to what the, so the generalization of trains is, is actually has has different threads to it. Um, it's yes, so I, I don't think anybody's quite put their finger on um, on 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 why on the on the particular subjects. Uh, the best one I, I, I example of, of a, a, an unusual uh, special interest. I, um, I did a talk at the autism show a few years ago, and I was sort of digging around amongst other people, other spokesmen, and. Um, so a community spokesman on, on social media and, and the, the mo most unusual one was somebody had a specialist interest in African dictators oh. and were yeah and were, researched them and obviously knew their life history and what, what all the things they'd done and you go fine yeah that's you know you, know, you can't necessarily stop them having an interest in that area so but you've got to sort of go with the flow um 
so yes it, it's it's um it's an intriguing area um I've, I'm, I'm aware of increasing numbers of groups uh, for uh, supporting girls and women on uh, who are autistic and it's it's interesting to see what comes out of those um as to they're they're not necessarily a gender specific special interest at all um so it's uh i'm, I'm always in, in, interested to know what um what other examples are out there and what and what can be done to try and well to support them yeah i think i think it's an interesting thing and i find myself constantly reminding people that you know you can get males who portray in this kind of more what we might think more typically female autistic tendencies and then we get plenty of girls who look yeah like that that more typical presentation and might be picked up uh, more easily but mm. um yeah like like you i find it really really fascinating and i do like the the idea of special interest in particular really fascinates me and at what point does something cross the line and become a, a special interest um so yeah, yeah wh wh when does it cross the line from just being something you like to a, a special interest uh, yeah it's interesting read, reading comments of number of people on social media uh, and i i think this is it we 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 started being very much focused on the on uh autistic children and then we got inevitably we got a number of express oh my my child isn't autistic he's got adhd but he still likes trains i'm going okay fine yeah 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 go for it not, not a problem at all and then you get the comments from people and you it's it's interesting how they the depth of interest in something is still there but and this is a sweeping generalization those with adhd traits or adhd tend to flip between them mm. um so they will have them and they will be deeply into them but they can park them and move on to something else and they may have two or three um or, but others will ha have one running all the time and have others that come and go on top of them um so it's it's uh, and i think they're it's interesting to see how they're um how they're aware of it as well uh, mm. that they're aware that they have they have they have a, a an intense interest in something and they they perhaps have found out more information than most people about it yeah um and it, and you you also can get a situation where you get those that are as they get older that their special interest might not be seen as sort of um age appropriate anymore um so the whole thomas tank engine thing um is I, I, it's lovely when we get sort of teenagers and we get we get people helping who are sort of you know 18 or, or older and they've they've still got an interest or a, a great knowledge in it and they can go off and chat with the kids and it do you know uh, completely at their level and they go wow mm -hmm. um and, and i know there are there are um there are guys i've, I've aware of on, on social media who will who are i'm i'm sort of guessing but then 20s and 30s who will who sort of customize thomas the tank engine brio things into 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 or create you know uh, uh, panoramas to to depict the story so they're using their level of you know, design craft wow. photographic video skills but thomas is still the thing um so yes it, it's it, it's a case of anything anything goes and it's it's very it must be very difficult for families to sort of think you know i wish my son daughter would just drop this and do something a bit more grown up and get some friends you know and you go no, you, if you go and if you try and peel them off it you're going to have um it's it's a sort of safety zone for them uh as well as being something that they're not going to think instantly forget everything that they've picked up about it yeah. um it'll still be there i guess that there's different ways of approaching that though as well aren't there because um you can use special interests as a way into connecting with someone as well yeah. and i think sometimes it can feel yeah. a bit like uh they can those interests might feel alien to you and not of interest if it's not something you know about but i don't know i've certainly found uh like with my daughter her special interest is snakes we don't have any snakes but she knows a lot about snakes and mm -hmm. i I had spiders growing up and never had any interest in snakes and I wasn't interested in snakes, but I have found that just, I have a lot of admiration for her level of knowledge on this. And when she gets talking on it, it is quite nice as a parent to be able to sit back and this child who doesn't always seem very engaged with much can just, you know, yeah. there's something, I don't know, I find there's something there, but it's about knowing how to find those ways in almost, isn't it? Particularly if it's not yeah. much about. You, you can, I mean, you can have i've had some very grown-up conversations with kids about things just sort of challenging something though because they've obviously sort of sucked everything in and are very much sort of through, through their you know how it's been presented to them yeah. whether it's you know youtube reading stuff whatever it might be and you can then have a um what is a very sort of grown-up conversation about something uh which happens to be their special interest 
uh, and it just gives them that opportunity as as is you know those skills are developed in school and and you know university or wherever um and again using that special interest as the basis of it um have a have you know challenge them on something or, or give them a bit of background so that they they're looking at it in a different context so why why were the thomas attack engine books written in that way why were they designed like that um so again it just broadens their mind from away from just you know the the, the thing for its own sake mm. um but yes it is it there is a lovely there's a sort of um uh there's a it's sort of self uh, self acceptance, I think, as well, my, from the children themselves and, and the adults, of that sort of um, y yes, I, this is information I know. This is my this is my strong area, um, and I think the the interactions are interesting as well. You you where you get two people with a similar or the same special interest, they will they will interact, they will work together, they will like like they do at our play sessions. And if you go to the the um, the, the preserved railways, a lot of their you know, volunteer staff um uh, and, and and would be um are likely to be autistic as well and they, they but their interactions there aren't the sort of you know going going for a drink or having a chat and, and talking about what's on they're, they're doing it in a sort of parallel uh, activity working supporting what it is they support and then afterwards they will just go home and that'll be the end of it and there won't be a sort of oh do you want to catch up with them outside no it's all right no it's fine that, that was that's my that's my special interest zone yeah. um and it, it's again, it, it's that it's it, there's an art to then managing them as volunteers or managing them as staff um, because they're, they're, they're drivers for doing it um, are, are slightly different uh, and they won't necessarily go down the pub after work or after, you know, at the end of a weekend. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that they, you know, that, that they're, they're any worse because of that. That's an interesting point, actually. I haven't really thought about that. Yeah. And where you're, you're you've got volunteers who work with you who yeah you're 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 selecting them uh sort of positively discriminating in favor of uh neurodiverse volunteers but i suppose that brings with it um yeah some well, no, not challenges but things to consider i suppose doesn't it yeah um it, it's interesting where you get you get uh situations where they, they people will will move will look for sort of voluntary or paid jobs which have, which are a sort of behind the scenes their support roles mm. um which may be because they it, it reduces any pressure for social communication phone calls whatever it might be um when you, you get in, interesting situations in in where you got active volunteers running things where some of them are doing it because of their love of the, of, of the subject but then they're actually in a, a quite a, a a front line position and having to deal with with customers and families and um whilst to them it wouldn't really matter if if their steam train was running half an hour late because it's still a steam train you still got somebody coming along who's getting annoyed at that because they've got to get home or the child's getting upset or whatever so you do have those um you need to be aware of of those what, what the the things that which may be a bigger um a bigger issue in mm -hmm. those situations um so yes it, that, that then that has implications with Obviously, you know, with recruitment, with recruit, with with training, with sort of supervision, and where where you can where you can put people, um, which might be in a, a which could be a, in a sort of challenging position, a challenging situation, for them anyway. Yeah. Do you find it easier to work with um, other neurodiverse people? Or uh, yes, this is a very simple answer to that one, and I often find I, I, I will when I've either met people or parents have come along or I'm working, you know as part of my social enterprise with people i will think afterwards and go that meeting or that so-and-so or that whatever was really easy oh hang on <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, we never quite got around to it but actually yeah we were just on the same way of length about it um we're very sort of operational focused but then equally nobody nobody being t t hugely competitive about anything so i i can go off and come up with harebrained ideas and uh, about then the, the rest of them will just sort of either rip it to shreds or just go mm, maybe not now um which is great because you do need that that's a sort of uh, you know a realism um a bit of realism put onto some of them um but equally it's it's such an open community as well yeah. um people are parents and and autistic children and autistic adults are very open to and very blunt um about their likes dislikes and all of that so you can find out quite quickly what what works and what doesn't um we, we've done a sort of research amongst our families to see what else would 
um, we could add to our sessions or how we could run things differently. And it was very clear what came back. Um, <laughs> very, very clear, uh, which is great from a market research point of view. That's just what you want. Um, I mean, we, we had, we've got the situation that the, uh, the, the parents and carers are there for sort of two hours and have very little to do, mm. which is great for them. And then we, was, we would, we, we've said to them before, well, is this an opportunity for us to, you know, bring in somebody who you can pick their brains about, whatever it might be, um, in terms of support schools, whatever it might be. And a, a significant majority of them basically told us to buzz off because they just that was they, they deal with that all week and they don't this, this was they wanted the chill out time as well as the kids um so yeah there was no we we, we didn't get much okay so oh that's a lovely idea when actually they were meaning you know, you know <laughs> i don't really want that at all we would yeah. we, they told us um and, and inevitably working with autistic adhd children we're working with a lot of autistic adhd parents whether they well, know it yeah. or not um so that's um that in itself is 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 helpful, um, uh, just to sort of be aware of that, um, and that it, it obviously it comes it comes with the genes. So uh, um, they, we they they can often we, we often find getting very sort of specialist questions being put to us because they're just realizing that you know they're in an environment the children their children are now in an environment that just sort of gets it. Yeah. And so they're, they're then in the same place. Go, oh, actually, there's, I've had that this odd question I've been meaning to ask somebody and never quite know, known who to ask. So, uh, yeah, we have to field some interesting inquiries from time to time. It's great, though. It sounds like you've created a really sort of safe environment, both for the children and for the adults that support mm. them. Um, and a nice break as well from kind of neurotypical life, because it is actually the world's quite overwhelming isn't it I, I i find this i'm uh increasingly worried i think like a lot of autistic people about the return after the pandemic and how actually that's gonna work um yeah i don't know having had quite, quite such a break from it uh the idea of I, I don't know how i used to do what i used to do and i'm not sure how i'll do it again i don't know what i don't know if you kind of feel that too but it's uh yeah, yeah it's been odd i mean look because I, I, i've been able to sort of work from home or develop things from home and we, we, we when we weren't able to run events we we set up an, uh, an activity pack scheme to send out train based stuff to um, to to families and we've also done sort of broader sort of mentoring support um, to both families and the children um, initially on on the, the the challenges of working working or studying from home yeah. um, but there is now this sort of switching back it was very interesting during the first first lockdown where you got families being very vocal on on autism groups saying how wonderful um lockdown was because their child didn't have to go to school and they didn't have all the pressures of school yeah and but then you actually got it, <laughs> with that very black and white thinking um what you then got quietly mentioned was actually my child's really struggling because they haven't got the the the, the sort of predictable um uh, setup mm -hmm. so therefore anything Doing anything at home is 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 just about impossible so you, you again it was it, there are times when the the, the the autism community being because of its breadth has mm -hmm. to occasionally think that it's it's actually it has to recognize itself um and not be too um too specific about it um and yeah it it, it will it will be different um uh it's i think that I think it will be that, and that then is diff, is more difficult for autistic people to have to get their heads around it. Um, they'll some things will be easier, some things will be will be different, harder. Um, uh, yeah, I, I suppose less working with with everybody in the same place at the same time uh, makes it more easier for people to sort of disappear down their own particular rabbit hole of of knowledge, information, and things. Which, looking back on it, I know I used to do. Get a project, and if I really liked the project, that was me sort of for the next three days, and I'd forgot everything else that I was doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it does happen. Um, it's uh, um, yeah, it, it, it's an odd one. I think a lot of people have. There's been inevitable underlying anxieties. I noticed it myself from time to time as well, um, where you just realise, you know, the big outside world out there when you go down to the shop. You know, yeah, okay, and I'm feeling. I'm feeling this way because for a good reason. Um, uh, so it's, I, I don't know, I'm not quite sure how, how, how different it'll be. Um, 
uh, but there is any, any of these sort of transitions and also the, the transitions with regard to schools and things, they're going back to a school which is very busy with sorting out it, testing procedures and staff doing everything else as well. So the, even the schools with the best intentions and the best systems in place are going to be, um, they, they're going to be less responsive. Yeah. And they're going to forget or not be able to get around to doing something um, which they may or may not have promised. So um, it, it's, uh, yeah, every, everybody's got a lot more things, new things to think about. It's a lot to, lot to, to kind of process, isn't there? And yeah. how, how do you think that, because um, I'm just kind of wondering here about the the work that you're doing and the power that, that seems to have about kind of creating this safe space and enabling your children uh, to, to kind of have almost like a break from the world like how could a lot of the people who listen to my podcast will be kind of working in schools and other settings like that um how can they use maybe some of the lessons that you've learned um in their environments to support children on the spectrum or with the adhd yeah the, there's a couple of ways we we've, we've worked in schools uh both uh, special schools and mainstream schools um it's quite interesting to um, because what we do is quite sort of alternative and it's unstructured and hands off. It doesn't quite sort of, it, it can be seen as just a sort of fun activity for the kids. Uh, and it can be sometimes difficult to sort of explain our, um, the, the, the impact that, that we have. Um, and it's one of the areas we'd love to develop, uh, knowing that we, we are working with a sort of specialist, uh, audience, so to speak, of, of only some of the children, um, but the, the, uh, our approach there would is, is actually to sort of flip it over a bit to the point where it's rather than it being the autistic ADHD child is, is the sort of, is, is there on the periphery of something which is being organized for everybody, it becomes their activity. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we've had instances where um, we're very welcoming to uh, siblings or friends who are neurotypical coming along. And it's quite interesting seeing a neurotypical child in a room full of neurodiverse children doing their own thing. Mm. And they, they they look as out of place as uh, as an autistic child might look in a classroom. Mm. Um, with regard to the, um, the 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 teaching side of things, there was some lovely research just came out recently um, about basically saying looking at look at special interests not as an obsession, not as something you know if if you finish your work in a primary setting, you know Johnny can go and play with the trains at the back of the classroom just to sort of keep me quiet. Mm. Um, they they did actual research where they were, whatever the, um, the activity was, um, the, the, the subject, the worksheets they were working on, they, the teaching assistants in the classroom were struggling to get the autistic ADHD children focused because they were being given these, whether they were able to do them or not, one of the ability, it was just the focus. And in fact, they were looking at it going, why am I adding up, up you know, oranges and lemons? What is the point of this in that? So that autistic sort of what is the purpose of this yes what they then did was they gave them exactly the same exercises to do but based on their special interest oh. so they were now adding up trains adding up dinosaurs whatever and the, it was astonishing you're looking at it from my point of view i go what you mean you don't realize what would happen here um mm -hmm. and they got comments from the teaching assistants basically suggesting that you know they had they'd hardly finished handing out the worksheets and they got back to where they would normally sit to be able to sit next to them and go come on now now do the next one now you know how to do this um and there they were all done whole sheet wow. finished all done and and showing their true potential as well you know it was it was nine out of ten it was ten out of ten whatever it was and they're going oh hang on what was different about that well there was, it was one thing that was different they were doing it based on something they like um they've learned exactly the same thing whatever it might be and you might have to be a little bit um creative as to how you uh, goodness knows how you make um, much of the secondary curriculum um, based around a, uh, a special interest, but I'm sure there are ways. Um, and and or it's that thing of if if a, if the the set work for English literature is whatever, mm. um, or the, the the project in geography is about so and so. Well, can you just give a, a twist it around, or give them the option to to broaden it out into uh, to to going down the transport side of things, um, because you will get you know a huge you will you will they will show what they're what they know what they're able to do from that um yes that's more work for the for, for the teachers and but it's 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 beginning to happen and it's one of those things when you for that little bit of extra um for for a small group of children in the classroom you then it takes all the pressure off the um the the, the teaching staff um and 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 you then can see what they're perf what they're able to do and it's not that sort of awkward thing of where you get the parents saying, but then 
this isn't reflecting what I know they're capable of doing. Uh, and yet, and they do everything at home perfectly well, but when they're in the classroom, it's more difficult. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's subtle little tweaks occasionally. It doesn't take a, it's not expecting one-to-one -one tuition for them. It's just that little thing of, hang on, let's just give, let's just focus it around something that they've, or at least relate it to something that, that is of interest to them. Um, and dig that sort of mindset, whether it's snakes or spiders or whatever it might be. My, um, it, it reminds me actually, Lyra, so as well as snakes, space is her other thing. And um, there was one time uh, in the last year where she had um, done some kind of testing at school and it, it hadn't it hadn't gone well, but with the exception of just one section where she'd excelled and she basically completely failed on all of it. But this one section she got good marks on and we didn't know the context of what these different bits were. And the only thing we could pick out was we thought the thing she'd done better on was nonfiction. And then I just had this theory and I said to her, like, what was the topic? <laughs> oh, well, it was about space. Ah, OK. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because you, you you've naturally with, with that special interest, you you that they they are they are the most hungry learners about it. Mm. Perhaps in a very non-fictiony, facty yeah. sort of um, in, information grabbing type thing, with what not necessarily challenging it, um, but um, or or seeing it seeing a bigger yeah. a, a bigger thing of it. But that that can sort of that can that can develop over time. I so say the um, the guy I know who's a, a uh, bus scheduler. Mm -hmm. um, I can just imagine him, him in that job. The, the, the bus company must go, yeah, go for it, mate. You know, because we're, you know, <laughs> he, he, what what he is producing, they will know full well will work. You know, yeah. absolutely bang on because he's taken everything and probably a few extra things into account, um, which mm -hmm. most other people just wouldn't have that day to day, you know, day, -to -day knowledge or or keenness to make it work as well. Mm -hmm. They're not just doing it for the sake of it. Um, it's but, interesting though isn't it that kind of societal like interpretation of things I just find myself thinking you know somewhere in the background on my bookshelves is my uh, PhD thesis and I just I mean really every PhD thesis is essentially a special interest isn't it you become the person who knows more about that one tiny thing in the whole world than anyone else um, which is which is kind of cool but in another context we'd probably go that's a little odd, wouldn't we? But because you're doing it, you know, it's within the confines of a respectable path of study. I think we're quite yeah. accepting of that as a society. But if, you know, someone just went into that much detail of research or something without it being a PhD, I'm not sure it would be quite, do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, I think they, they have their use in as much as that, they, that in that context, if you're doing that sort of level of, of research you're being guided about the project and then make sure that there there is something coming at the end of it not just a it's not just a mind dump of your information about african di dictators you actually there is a <laughs> there is a reason for it which again it allows that sort of the the the, the analytical side to hopefully come in and mm -hmm. and it's perhaps more difficult to sort of convert it into um a sort of real a real life what are the real life implications of this rather than it just being mm -hmm. you know i know all the thomas characters and every single page they appeared in all of the different books yeah okay so what 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 what's the next step up from that yeah. uh, that can be more difficult um uh, so it's and and sometimes it it, it that is more than you know that they it's, i suppose it's this thing of, of autistic people being seen as slightly sort of insular and whatever is so that it becomes it can be seen as being a sort of information gathering and without any purpose to it um so it that, that's that is more difficult to sort of um turn around um but it, but it is it is possible if, if people know how to how to work with people and, and guide them in a direction and, and not get them down too many too many rabbit warrants for too long <laughs> um uh, and it does... a purpose for it isn't it as you say because if someone can use their special interest to um contribute towards their kind of their life their career their ability to connect mm -hmm. and make a living that's got to be a great thing yeah um it, it, it's interesting as when i when i got my diagnosis i was i so i was still my head was still in sort of corporate world and going okay so what sort of jobs corporate jobs are best suited to me and there are organization out there who don't necessarily go down they're not going down the special interest side of things but they're going down the we know that some autistic people are absolutely you know will will analyze things to the nth degree and be very good at, at pouring through huge amounts of data be very mm -hmm. consistent about it so there are organizations who provide jobs in, in you know well very 
big, well-respected, big multinationals. But that, I'm just wondering whether that sort of um, that's the process and and the, and the and the thought process, not necessarily their knowledge or their interest in it. Mm. Um, so it, it 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 sort of makes them into a makes them into a thing, a processing a processing thing, uh, uh, you know, a, a small cog in a very big, rather than a um, somebody with with potentially quite different, very uh, very outward looking sometimes, um, and and don't get me started on the whole autistic people aren't don't have any empathy um mm. that there, there is an awful lot of people thinking about others uh, and looking at it actually at the, at the at the expense of themselves quite often quite often um so they're thinking about their impact on other people they're thinking about the impact of what what they do um and how others how they will be seen by others as well um so it's it's yeah uh, the, the job situation is, is, is an interesting one. Uh, some special interests, probably there isn't a great um, practical use for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think there's, there's um, and it, I think it, that, that would help with, with, with that sort of the career guidance type stuff or the ability to sort of think about, you know, uh, areas of study uh, to try and not just look at cold facts of, you know, oh, you got a, a C or whatever the modern equivalent of it is in, you know these three subjects therefore this would be a good thing for you to do actually try and try and turn it around um and go well what what, what else are you interested in how can we tie this all together um so you end up sort of a balance um just to keep keep opportunities open mm. wow we've covered a lot of ground what um <laughs> what what thought would you like to to close with i always think it's a really important uh, moment you know leaving leaving people with something to go away and, and and have a think about or do what thought would you like to leave people with it's interesting we, there is there is always a need for more sort of understanding awareness and and think and and it's it, it I, I realize i sort of work in a in a a small sort of little a small bit of the autism community but the whole the whole special interest thing it, it is this thing of um uh, like you were saying earlier seeing them in a seeing them in a different way um that they are actually incredibly powerful incredibly positive they're positive for the people themselves they're not just doing it because it's the only thing they can do they're doing it they chose it then some of the subjects clearly they only chose it because their parents or their friends wouldn't have suggested it um and, and so it, it's then going, OK, this this shows a huge amount. It's not in the traditional way you might have through school, university or whatever. Um, but it, it's just a, a different way in to show their their abilities. So then how you can use that as evidence, if you wish, um, to go, OK, we know the classroom is difficult. We know school is difficult. We know, you know, these particular subjects are tricky for them. It's very difficult for them to operate in these sort of areas. But hang on. Here we here we have something that form doesn't contradict it, but that but uh, you know sheds a, a very different light on it. Um, so it's something to and, and it's difficult for them sometimes to actually you know own up to them because they they know they're a bit unusual in their level of detail or whether they're you know it's it's appropriate for their age group or whatever. Um, but there, there, there's there's lots of scope. Um, so a little bit of flexibility. Uh, and a little bit of sort of digging around in that area can uh, can work wonders. Mm-hmm.